There have been noticeable changes in the accounting profession which resulted from globalization, offshoring, and technological advancements. Accounting education has lagged behind as it hasn't reflected these changes. The international education standards issued by the IFAC focused on the skills needed by accounting graduates. These skills include intellectual, technical, and functional, personal, interpersonal, and organizational and business management skills. However, there's a problem here. It's often difficult to find space in the curriculum to introduce new skills. A potential solution is to develop multi-layers of learning and competencies around already existing traditional technical content. From here came the idea to create a cross-cultural and skill-based simulation project, which was a collaborative effort between two academic institutions, Qatar University in Qatar and Bond University in Australia. The focus was on a joint topic in the advanced accounting course, which focused on consolidation of financial statements. The same project was offered to students in the two universities. The project revolved around a fictitious corporate takeover of an Australian company by a company located in Qatar. Before the acquisition, the two companies used different accounting standards. The acquiring company in Qatar used GAAP, while the acquired company in Australia used IFRS. After the acquisition, the Australian company was allowed to use its accounting standard, IFRS, throughout the financial year. However, at year's end, it had to translate its financial statements based on GAAP so that it sends its information to the acquiring company in Qatar. The company in Qatar, also known as the parent company, detected what seemed as possible accounting irregularities in the financial information provided by the Australian company. Students at Qatar University played the role of consultants that specialize in GAAP, whereas students at Bond University played the role of consultants that specialize in IFRS. The Qatari company reached out to the consultants that are based in Qatar, students at Qatar University. However, because those consultants are not very familiar with IFRS, they partnered with the consultants in Australia, those that are played by the Bond University students. The Australian students are considered to be senior associates, which means they are more experienced and knowledgeable, whereas the consultants that are based in Qatar are considered junior associates with less experience and limited knowledge. The reason for this is because students in Australia received the assignment or the project one month prior to the date of it being released to the Qatari students, which means that they were uh, at a position to receive feedback from their teacher in Australia, therefore making them the party that is more knowledgeable and more experienced, and therefore they are ready to play the role of senior associates. There were some rules that governed this uh, communication between the consultants played by the Qatari students and the Bond University students. First of all, Qatari students had uh, were not to receive any additional assistance by their instructor. They could email the senior associates in Australia for mentoring and guidance, but they were only limited up to three emails. Students in Australia playing the consultants could not provide direct solutions. They could only provide guidance and mentoring, mentoring to the students in Qatar. Qatar University students were in two different sections. One section used Arabic as the medium of instruction, and it had 32 students, while the other section used English uh, as the medium of instruction, and it had 32 students as well. Despite differences in the language, the academic content for the two sections was identical. Furthermore, the two sections were uh, taught by the same instructor, uh, who was one of the co-designers of the project, myself. The combined number of all students was 64. They were allocated to 16 different groups. Each group was made up of four students. The purpose was to create a balance so that each group would have an equal opportunity to do well in the project. I used the mid-semester exam grades to rank students. I ranked the grades for students in the English section from the highest to the lowest, while ranking the grades for the Arabic students from the lowest to the highest. I placed the two rank lists next to each other. Starting from the top, I paired up two high-performing students from the English track with two high-performing students from the Arabic track. That's how I formed the first of the 16 groups. As I went down the list, the group started to contain two high-performing students from the Arabic track with two low-performing students from the English track. This team structuring mimicked real-life team building. 
The purpose was to create a balance in each group. Secondly, to enable and facilitate peer-assisted learning. Peer-assisted learning happened at three different levels. The first level was between students within the same language plan. The second was between students with, within the different language plan. And then the third peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning happened between students in Qatar playing the junior associates and students in Australia playing the senior associates. From this information, we started a research project. The main question was how students perceived their engagement in the cross-cultural and skill-based simulation project. We used Q methodology. The first step was to conduct a concourse by having 59 statements from the students that were interviewed. From those 59 statements, we were able to produce 25 statements. Some of those statements, for example, uh, number five, I learned some functional and technical skills from collaborating with the international peers. Number 13, the project allowed me to search within the accounting standards to find information that was unknown to me. Number 25, conducting this project was mutually beneficial for both students in my university and the international peers. Students were asked to place information in a Q grid, as you can see here, going from the left to the right, where they would have to uh, uh, you know, place those statements in one of those boxes. So the 25 statements had to fit the grid, which means they were forced to make certain decisions. And then later on, they had to provide justification for the, for the two extremes, for the strongly agree and for the strongly disagree. The results showed that a total of 22 students had a completely positive viewpoint about their engagement in the simulation project, which enabled them to have intellectual skills, communication skills, technical skills, and organizational skills. Six students concentrated on the professional and personal benefits obtained from the simulation project. These students ha saw the project as a, the glass half full, they were positive, and they focused on the technical skills and the organizational skills. However, there were nine students that saw the project uh, within a negative light. Um, they said that they had to depend on their own intellectual, technical, and functional skills. The three groups indicated that they benefited more from the simulation project than a traditional project, which signaled to us that it is possible to include uh, new projects and new ideas in existing curriculum.